Hello, good afternoon. This is the Midday News. The news is live on Joy 99.7 in Accra, Love 99.5 FM in Kumasi, and over 30 affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions Radio Sangmali Wa, Jubilee Radio Keta, Radio Freed Nandom, Bipe FM Bipe. We're also live on Twitter Spaces, Facebook Live Stream, and my Joy Online Interactive app. The Media News is sponsored by Petrosol, your clean fuel in full quantity. Petrosol, always a delightful experience, and Jura Plus Ghana Limited, producers of quality PVC and HDPE pipes and water tank. Where Jura Plus goes, water flows. Coming up is leading member of the NPP, Alan Tremanting, set to resign from the party and contest the 2024 elections as an independent candidate. If he intends to go as independent presidential candidate, he will have to resign. We'll tell you what we know and explore the merits of such a move as he gets set to address the nation on his political future after withdrawing from the presidential race of the NPP. Also, fuel shortage looms in Ghana's oil transporters threaten withdrawal over alleged foreign takeover of their businesses. There's fear, there's anger, there's frustration, there's, we don't understand why families are a bit worried because the likelihood of their husbands and their businesses going down is great. We have more as they demand the National Petroleum Authority act fast to avoid a national crisis. Also, hundreds, including women and children, struggle for shelter in Bipwe as flood waters from the Bui Dam spillage takes over their homes over the weekend. We don't have place. We don't have place to sit. If we get, if government will come and help us and build some area for us, so that we move and go to the. We're live in the community for the latest. We have sports. 2020 Olympic bronze winner Samuel Techi believes Ghana can still qualify for next year's Olympics despite the setback in Senegal. And stalemate persists as major political parties, the NPP, NDC and the Electoral Commission clash over the venue for the limited registration exercise in Boko. They were made to write an undertaking of commitment. So far, we had one from one part. Simply because we rejected that they cannot discriminatorily send a machine to one area, leaving the two areas. We have details as NPP Communications Director for Boko Central calls for an extension of the registration exercise. We have told them that because of the, the lapses, several days there haven't been any registration within the Boko Central constituency. There's the need for them to see if they can give us more days. These and many more coming up shortly. Please stay with us. In less than two hours, leading member of the governing New Patriotic Party, Alan Kujo Tremanting, will announce his next political move. Alan Tremanting withdrew from the NPP presidential race after placing third in the Super Delegates Congress, saying he opted out following the intimidation of his agents. He also said the race seemed deliberately skewed in favor of one of the candidates. As the nation waits to hear his next move, Joy News has been doing some digging on the possible outcome of today's news conference. My colleague Elton Brobe joins me with more in the studio on this. Elton, what is Alan likely to say today? So there are key issues involved. What we are being told is that he's likely to announce his resignation from the MPP to enable him to contest the 2024 presidential elections as an independent candidate or form a new political party or join an existing party or endorse one of the candidates in the MPP uh, presidential primaries or support whoever emerges winner of the party's November 4 presidential primaries. So these are the things we are learning. But we also know that some weeks ago, Mr. Lanchamante met some individuals media personalities, people from the academia, mm. in the business field, people mm. you describe as floating voters, and then some disgruntled members of the MPP. Now, the discussion centered on what he should do next. Mm -hmm. And then we are told that, in fact, we've spoken to at least five of the people who met Mr. Lanche in this closed session where his political future was discussed. And for which we are picking is that he was firm in his conviction that will better serve the nation going independent to contest the 2024 presidential mm. election. So by any last minute, just, we are likely to hear him announce that he will be contesting the 2024 presidential elections as an independent candidate. And that will lead 
him to now formally resign from the MPP. That's the information we are picking ahead of the news conference at 2 p.m. today. Right, Elton. But how does this, if he goes ahead, going to affect the fortunes of the NPP? Well, clearly, these are matters that is likely to affect the MPP because a member of the MPP. But my colleague Kofiage has been doing some work, and I'm sure that uh, we'll get to know very shortly. Thank you, Elton. Election poster Ben Efsin, who says he expects Alan Tremontin to resign from the MPP and contest the 2024 election as an independent candidate. If he intends to go as independent presidential candidate, he will have to resign. And uh, I can't tell you who or those I heard from. But I'll be very surprised if Alan will not contest, if Alan will not contest the MPP uh, primaries. Yes, he won't contest, but uh, if you ask me to put my head on, I'm 70% sure that he, he'll be on the ballot, but as an independent presidential candidate. And you have to resign first from the party. Oh, you are Maybe it has been delayed because from the original plan that I had, it was to be for him not to contest for about a week or so, so that there will be a bit of flux, then he will make his move. So if... Well, clearly, Alan, as an independent candidate, will head the NPP more than any political party, especially in the 2024 election. Kofi J is with our research desk and joins me in studio for more on this development. Kofi, how much will Alan head the NPP should he announce his breakaway from the party today? Well, Mohamed, the Ashanti region historically has been a crucial stronghold for the NPP, and it also happens to be the home region of Alan Kojo Chermante. Now, holding all other factors constant, there's a significant trend in the Ashanti region's voting behavior when Alan uh, faces challenges in the presidential primary. So, for instance, in 2007, when he faced his first defeat to President Ekufuado, the Ashanti region's support for the MBP decreased by 4.5 percentage points in the 2008 elections, where the party lost to the MDC in the runoff. Now, in 2010, Alan suffered another significant loss. In the primaries in fact there was an unprecedented drop in the in support from the ashanti region and mpp lost again in the 2012 election however in 2016 uh, in the 2016 election uh, deviated from the normal pattern despite losing in the primaries alan chose to go on a campaign tour with president and the ashanti region responded positively by voting over 76 percent for the M mpp uh, which gave president akufuado his first presidential victory in 2016. in 2020 uh, mame president akufuado was allowed to go on a post in the primaries and the ashanti region support again dropped by three percentage points and the party managed to secure victory by garnering votes from other uh, regions and uh, particularly in the northeast region where vice president baumia hails from uh, so this is what we call the alan Tremontin effect thank you very much kofi J. we'll be following up on this all important announcement now kofi J., is there more you have to say on um the the effect that is also going to have of on 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 the fortunes of the other candidates absolutely we'll be on the grounds this afternoon at 2 p.m and you know the election headquarters will bring will be bringing you analysis on TV. So at 2 p.m., join us on TV. We'll be live on the ground. Thank you, Kofi J. Now moving on, Ghana could be hit with fuel shortages soon following threats by the Tanker Owners Union to halt the transportation of fuel across the country over claims some foreign nationals have taken over their businesses. Under the local content law and the deregulation of the petroleum sector, the haulage of petroleum products across the country is reserved for indigenous Ghanaian companies. But according to the union, a Chinese firm behind the construction of an oil refinery at Tema Sentiu has brought tankers to offload the petroleum products locally. Member of the union Kwame Jantua tells my colleague Elton Broby they'll withdraw their services if nothing is done about it. Look, when we deregulated at the time it was GMPC and those people who were distributing. When, the moment we deregulated, it was made that that portion should be given to Ghanaians. So if you see Shell, BP, all those 
they have tankers, but it's not their tankers. It is our tankers. But because we pick for them, we live for them, we paint our tankers with their emblems. But they don't own the tankers. Why should the refinery now come and say, we have our own tankers and we are distributing? Tor, does Tor have its own tankers? NPO is a regulator. Do they have their own tankers? BDCs, who bring refined petroleum products, do they have their own tankers? They all depend on us. So if you are coming in, you are going to kill our business. And we've got to fight for it. And what we are hearing from some of your members is that they intend to withdraw their services. And that will mean that they will stop hauling fuel across the country. The implications of this, as well as of concern to a lot of people, is that a vibe among your members? It is the last point of call that we would want to do. We are hoping that we can have some discussions. Authorities that be will sit and talk this thing through. But if our backs are, are, are hit against the wall, there will be no option for us to do that but to go on strike and not lift, unfortunately. What will be, be the implications of this? Well, obviously, it's going to bring shortages into the country with refined products because these truckers who haul to the petrol garages. So if they decide they are not going to haul again, who suffers? Is the Ghanaian who suffers because of a foreign company? No, it can't happen that way. What, what is the feeling among your members? Is, is there fear that they stand on the verge of losing their businesses? There's fear, there's anger, there's frustration, there's we don't understand why families are a bit worried because the likelihood of the, their husbands and their businesses going down is great. And most importantly, we have gone for loans from banks to buy these trucks. We'd have to pay those loans back. And if we don't have the work to do, what happens? As I talk now, nearly 5,000 of our trucks are idle. Because of what? Because we, we, we don't have enough to lift. Kwame Jantua is a member of the Tanker Owners Union. Now, Joy News is learning that the National Petroleum Authority is meeting interested party on the matter. Moving on, hundreds of persons, including women and children, are struggling for shelter in Bwipi, in the Savannah region, as flood waters took over their homes over the weekend. Several houses, including toilet facilities and farms, have been submerged. The residents have blamed the situation on an ongoing spillage of the Bui Dam, as they fear their woes may not be over as managers of the dam warn of more spillage in the coming days. Listen to some of the residents expressing their frustration to join news. And we don't know. We are sure that the water is from B Dam. But the way we have seen the water, it's not rain water. Because yesterday the water is over there. And this morning it came here, which means it's for, they are opening from somewhere. It's from somewhere to here. We don't have place. We don't have place to sit. If we get the if government will come and help us and build some area for us so that we move and go to there. Because every year we are facing the problem. Every year. Our homes have collapsed. There are about seven of us that have our homes collapsed because of these floods. The flood has left us unproductive, even on our farms. We have experienced floods before, but not this intense. I couldn't apply the normal route to this place. If we don't get help immediately, we will be in trouble. Let's stay a bit longer on floods because another community, Afuta Ganukpe, has also been affected by the floods. Here are some of the residents affected. People are living out of the community because the water has entered into their houses. The water has entered to the house. Every house here is flooded. It's flooded. Huh? Every house is flooded. This is a house. How can we live in this house? I should not have any place to go. You see, the whole house is flooded. Journeys, please read this for us so that we'll be able to <laughs> have some, even though if Nanmo can do something better to assist us, we are pleading. The motor riders are suffering, the households are suffering. At first, you can take moto from a post office to a JV Copper, five city, but now, if the motor riders want to take because of the water, they will charge you 10 CD. Some people charge 15 CD. 
Now, join us is learning that the police administration has begun a review of its handling of the Occupy Jolobi House protests. Now, our sources say the police management board went into a meeting after the protests on Saturday to look into concerns that came up about the security arrangements during the three-day protest. For Smith is a member of the security desk and has been following the developments. Meanwhile, government says it is yet to receive a petition from the governance advocacy advocacy group. First Smith joins me now in studio and tells me more about this. What's be, what have you been picking up? Well, Mamesi, see, we understand uh, from our sources within the police service that they're undertaking this review following complaints about the mass arrests, which included journalists covering the demonstration. A decision to review their operations was arrived at following a meeting by the police management board, which went deep into the night on Saturday. The IGP, we understand, is part of this review, and the Accra Region Police Commander, COP Dr. Saibu Pabi Gariba, who led the police operations during the demonstration, is also expected to be the main person assisting in this review. Thank you, Fred Smith. He's a member of our security desk. Meanwhile, government says it is yet to receive a petition from government advocacy group Democracy Hub on their concerns following a three-day protest in the capital. Now, designated spokesperson Hassan Tampuli insists that it concerns of ma- mismanagement of the economy, unemployment and a demand to end corruption are issues already being dealt with by government. Meanwhile, organizers of Occupy Jolobi House protests have served notice they will embark on a series of demonstrations in December during the peak of the Christmas festivities if the current state of affairs does not not change. Speaking on the probe ahead of the programs, um, head of programs at the Democracy Hub and convener of Fix the Country, Benjamin Dako said government has a duty to make life better. Before we hear from him, let's hear from Hassan Tampuli. Uh, you see, you can't put something on nothing. We need to know exactly what we are responding to. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For many, many years that we have been listening to uh, demonstrations and seeing demonstrations all over the world. When you finish, at least you are able to send a certain position paper that these are our grievances. You customize them, even if it is one, and you have a placard, and this is my grievance, you hand it over and say, these are our challenges. Government is able to, to address them. But in this particular situation, we do not know exactly what we'll be responding to. So there has to be, you know, an action and then, then we'll be able to react. Hazan Tampoli is designated government spokesperson on the Democracy Hub protests. Now, NDC MP for Madina, Francis Xavier Sosu, has introduced a private member's bill to remove taxes on sanitary parts and prevent future taxation of the product. There has been intense advocacy over the last few months for government to remove the taxes on the product, but government has not yielded. The proposed bill seeks to amend the VAT Act to remove VAT on sanitary parts and tampons. It will also push to prescribe future taxation of the the product. Francis Xavier Sosu has since presented the proposed bill to the clerk of parliament. Kweku Asante joins me in studio with more on this. Has this bill been formally presented before the house, Kweku? Yes, this bill has been sent to the clerk of parliament before it will come to the house. And let me get straight to the specifics before we hear what happened in parliament. According to Francis Xavier Sosu, he wants the review of the 20% VAT on the, the, this tax, he also wants an amendment to that VAT amendment bill to ensure that in the future, this um, 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 sanitary parts and tampons, among other things, are not, um, as it were, taxed anymore. What are the main changes the bill anticipates? So the bill, the, the bill that is now being drafted is expecting that, among other things, in the future, no future government can decide to tax sanitary parts and they are insisting that uh, uh, and by um, and by they i mean francis xavier Zussou and, and his colleagues are insisting that the 15 percent value added tax on menstrual hygiene pr- products is removed well thankfully francis xavier Zussou joins us on the phone with more f- thank you for joining us first what does your proposal to the clerk of parliament signify um well thank you very much i think the proposal signifies um the fact that um uh, we are still uh, listening to people. Uh, we are listening to the grievances of people. 
since this tax was introduced in January, uh, many have spoken against it. There are several outpour uh, of <coughs> disagreements against the tax uh, handle. Uh, we were thinking that the media budget review would have reviewed the tax. Unfortunately, that didn't happen in August when uh, the finance minister came back to parliament. And in that case, we needed to do something. So I said that the best way was to use the private members' bill approach uh, to insist that the tax be uh, scraped off and also prescribe future taxation of such product because it's very, very discriminatory. Well, your bill will have financial consequences, and the Constitution prohibits such private members' bill. Not so? Uh, not so. Uh, not exactly so, because the, I'm sure the article that you are making reference to is Article 108 of the 1992 Constitution. And then Article 108 is very, very clear as to which bills you cannot, um, you cannot introduce. And for the purposes of your listeners, maybe let me just say, read the, the, the relevant provision. It's Article 108... Uh, it says that Parliament shall not, unless the bill is introduced or the motion is introduced by or on behalf of the President, A, proceed upon a bill, including an amendment to a bill that, in the opinion of the person presiding, makes provisions for any of the following. A, uh, the imposition of taxation, the alteration of taxation, otherwise done by reduction. So this one is a reduction of this taxation and also making provisions for future, uh, <coughs> ensuring that in the future such products will not be taxed. So I believe that this is squarely within the remit of the Constitution and within the remit of a private member. We're grateful for your time here, Mr. Francis Xavier Sosu. The Midday News is brought to you by Petrosol, your clean fuel in full quantity. And Jura Plus Ghana Limited, producers of quality PVC and HDPE pipes and water tank. Where Jura Plus goes, water flows. And coming up next, still made persist as major political parties in the NPP, NDC and the Electoral Commission ch- clash over the venue for the limited registration exercise in Boko. They were made to write an undertaking of commitment. So far, we had one from one part. Simply because we rejected that they cannot discriminatorily send a machine to one area, leaving the two areas. We have details as NPP Communications Director for Boko Central calls for an extension of the registration exercise. When we come back, we have sports. When budgets are tight and money difficult to come by, you want to be sure you get the best value for your money. These are not times to be spending money fixing expensive engine problems because of cheap fuel and lubricant. Drive to a petrol source station today and buy your quality fuel and lubricant and rest assured of fuel that lasts long and lubricants that prevent expensive engine problems. Hear the sound. <laughs> Petrosol. Clean fuel in full quantity. Imagine say water wake up at dawn. In no both. In no chop. When it vanish for your area for two weeks, uh-huh. you not get one drop self inside your tank. Hey. Hadia, our life was in dangerous. Only our neighbor get water with water tank. Water, water tank. tank? Yes, water tank. Mamma mia, that water tank gets meter for checking water level. That water tank be fine past Kumasi Selindio. <laughs> that water tank be tough like Ghana and me. That water tank, they carry water pe, 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 so say some no go left inside the supply tank. Mm. What a tank! That's my boss, Mr. Foncho go talk. <laughs> Beautiful, durable, with water level indicator and accurate volume of water. Water tank. What a tank by Duraplast. Thanks for staying. What do we have in sports, Mubarak? Yep, and uh, 2020 Olympic bronze winner Samotechi says it is not the end of the road for Ghana in the quest to qualify for next year's Olympics in Paris. Now, Ghana's boxing team were unable to secure slots for the Olympics at a qualifier in Senegal, where all 12 representatives were unable to qualify. The good news, however, is that there are two more opportunities next year in Italy and Thailand. Techi is of the conviction the team will impress and book slots for the next 
global showpiece. We have to get a slot to the Olympics. And I was looking at a Nigeria team. Um, they only brought five boxes, and I think two of them qualified. And we went with 12. But in all, we did well, but we did not qualify to the Olympics. And we, we have to qualify more slot to the Olympics. And most of our guys need more experience. And, you know, um, I'm there now for them. And Kutu is there now for them. Coach, you know the road more. So I think this time we are going to make it and we, we are going to prove to Ghana that we, we have a slow to go. That's 2020 Olympic medalist Samuel Techi. Back to you. Thank you, Mubarak. Now, there's been an increasing number of criminal cases recorded recently in the Ashanti region. These cases, mostly involving women, have left some residents living in fear. There are calls for increased security intelligence in addressing the menace. Nana Bwachi Dankwa Yadom has the rest of the story. The Asante region has recorded the highest number of murder cases since the beginning of the year, according to the Bureau of Public Safety. The most recent incidents include the suspected gang rape of an 18-year-old lady, Abekwai, and the murder of Akwia Sewa, daughter of the Bekwai MC at Bibu, and the killing of Stella Osei by a house help at Sokobai Apaso. The latest is the shooting of a 25-year-old lady by a motor-riding gang at a Prade Junction in Kumasi. With a growing number of these criminal cases in the region involving women, residents of Aprade, Odium and communities dotted along the kumasi Ejusu Highway say they are living in fear. According to them, the growing number of cases recorded is a threat to their lives. Oh, I say, oh, No matter what she also, febra, febra. They come here to rob us all the time. It is not something new. They stole my friend's laptop just here. It's really dangerous. Security analyst Dr. Jones Opokuware says the growing number of cases in the Ashanti region is a major concern. He suggests an increase in police deployment in peri-urban areas to ensure safety. I have to be very honest with you. Um, when you go to certain areas, especially areas that are peri-urban in nature, and if you look at some of these crimes, they normally happen somewhere within the peri-urban or let's say a little aspect of the main city of Nana Bwachi Adams report. Now, it's been almost a week after the Electoral Commission put on hold the limited registration exercise in Boko Central in the Upper East region following a disagreement about the venue for the exercise. The EC proposed that the two leading political parties should write an undertaking of commitment to allow the Commission to proceed with the registration. However, both parties are yet to agree. William Obin Adakwa is the Upper East Regional Director of the EC. The challenge was that or is that they were made to write an undertaking of commitment. So far, we've had one from one party, but the other party, for security reasons, I would like to mention it. Now, responding to that, the NDC Communications Director for Boko Central, Yusif Otumba, says, although there is an agreement on the new location, the EC should be circumspect on its decision. Leaving the Bisa Belt and the Kukazabu area, decided to halt the entire registration exercise, including what they should be doing at their own office, per their own rules, simply because we rejected that they cannot discriminatorily send a machine to one area, leaving the two areas that were equally proposed. Meanwhile, NPP Communications Director for Boko Central, Nuruddin Guma, is calling on the EC to extend the deadline due to the intermittent halts of the registration process. So as we speak, it is quite difficult getting to the EC officers. We have told them that because of the, the lapses, several days there haven't been any registration within the Boko Central constituency. There's the need for them to see if they can give us more days. And they were thinking of con considering, but they said they would talk to their people in Accra the EC head office in Accra, and see if it's possible for them to add us even if it's a week. 
And that's it for the midday news. It was brought to you by Petrosol. Always a delightful experience. Dura Plus Ghana Limited, producers of quality PVC and HDPP pipes and water tank. Where Dura Plus goes, water flows. In our headlines, you heard that is the leading member of the NPP, Alan Tremanting, set to resign from the party and contest the 2024 elections as an independent candidate? We wait to find out. Living Word is up next with Pastor Mensah Otabel.